Hello, so today I'd like to talk about sustainable technology. First thing I want to sort of talk about is how I see what sustainable is. Um, to me personally, sustainable is things which don't have a negative impact in my lifetime. So if I do something and it's got an impact, an environmental impact, and the world can recover from that impact within my lifetime then I think that that's probably a, a sustainable thing. If it has an impact longer than my lifetime, then I'd say that that's not a sustainable thing, it is a negative impact. Um, reusing things which have already had the negative impact happen, so a reuse of something or a re-engineering or a repurposing, rebuilding, um, are all things which don't have the same amount of impact as they would if they were created from new. Uh, we have a, a strange situation now where we have an enormous renewable resource which is largely um, non-destructive to the environment. It's a massive amount of, of power waiting to be used and our current sort of trends and policies are trying to not use this renewable resource and to replace it with gadgets and gizmos and equipment that stop us using this um, very ecologically friendly power source in place of using petrol, diesel, electricity and all sorts of other um, so-called free energies. The biggest resource we have on this planet now, and it's growing, it's bigger now than it's ever been, that has an, a negative impact, is the human muscle. Right, okay, so let's have a look at some of the little solutions that I put in place, some of my gadgets. One of my favourite uh, sustainable gadgets is this one, which some of you will recognise. And this one's from 1880 something and um, requires no power to operate and works beautifully. So I stitch shirts and various things on this, make curtains and things, and it does all the sewing needs, it requires no power and it's never needed any repair as far as I can see, a very sustainable piece of equipment. So here we have some more environmentally friendly solutions to the uh, to work. This one is, um, is a good age. I have no idea what year it is. It's a two-speed. So it has this little system where you can change the gears to get a different gear ratio. Uh, these can be picked up relatively cheap. They will last indefinitely. Um, 
you know, like the battery operated drills, the problem with them is the batteries die eventually. So you get maximum 10 years use and then you've got a plastic and um, sort of the battery systems have all got to be taken care of and recycled, which is not, not pleasant. This is 100% recyclable. It's made out of cast iron and wood and a bit of steel. So there's lots of other versions, smaller, smaller little ones. Um, for other little jobs. Generally they're cheaper than a new electric drill. We have some uh, some braces and bits and this one's a ratchet system so this one can do in against walls which works well. There's a plainer simpler system there, probably older. No plastic involved, just wood and metal. 100% uh, recyclable, no power required, no maintenance, should last forever. My kitchen gadgets, simple little thing. Again, nothing to go wrong, should last for as, well, as long as I require it. 100% recyclable and just a joy to use. Okay, these are slightly different. These are plastic, but they, they're wound, hand wound things. So there's a torch, um, a radio. These are both sort of commonly available things, require no mains operation, but they are made of plastic. So when they do come to the end of their life, there is problems with recycling the plastic. Although the power usage the fact that they don't use throwaway batteries helps. An all metal coffee grinder, no plastic involved, just metal and wood. That's 100% recyclable. And we also have another interesting little thing here. This is an interesting one. It doesn't belong to me, but I've borrowed it for this. It's a battery operated pepper mill, which is all plastic with batteries and lights and all sorts of things and it's actually broken so they don't last for very long i have i have the sustainable alternative which is all wood and metal no batteries nothing to go wrong works lovely okay next we have a little grinder the meat grinder and this has been around for a long time again nothing to go wrong with it should last indefinitely Great for making mince meat and for doing sausages, etc. Now, the next thing we have is this, which is a hand operated flour mill. It can be used for beans and pulses and all sorts of other things as well. Now, what we do with this one is we take some grains, in this case, it's um, Buckwheat. So we take the buckwheat and pour it in the top. Find the handle. And it produces flour. And we can put that through twice. On the second time round, it produces a very fine flour. No electricity, no plastic, 100% recyclable. Here we have a nice little set of balance scales. These are all blacksmith made. Uh, they, um, they've been working perfectly all right. They've required no maintenance in all the years that they've been made. Somebody's painted them blue, but I think that was a choice rather than a need. They're, um, you can weigh them, weigh anything in combinations of weights. So you can do it in metric or imperial just by swapping the stack of things you operate. Now these, I've done some research on these and these were manufactured in approximately 1820. So nearly 200 years ago, 
and they still work perfectly fine. They're 100% recyclable, although they'll probably never need recycling. We have some little workshop tools, some grinders, but, um, good for, for sharpening, um, for drill bits, knives, etc. And they uh, will work without any any power. They're made 100% out of recyclable material. There's no plastics involved, no uh, batteries, etc. And there's a little drill, the same, and, and another grinder. There's loads and loads of different tools that you can find. These are generally available at boot sales or on eBay, places like that, and they quite are quite cheap. An interesting one, yeah, which some people will have seen before and some haven't. This is what I refer to as a Yankee screwdriver. Um, it's a ratchet screwdriver, so you can make it operate one way or the other or have it fixed. So it's just a, a good big screwdriver. And then it has the little secret thing that it does, which is this, which means that then when you push it against something, it operates to screw screws in or out. Again, made out of 100% recyclable materials, wood and metal, and should last indefinitely. Carrying on with the workshop and that sort of idea, the, um, in 1972 Casio created the all plastic and silicon chip pocket calculator. And this is what we had before, and I've still got, which is a slide rule. Uh, these can do all sorts of different calculations. You, um, you just set the scales to the different things and read off the results. Um, again, all made out of wood with a paper printed scale with a, a cellulose lacquer, lacquer on the top. But again, no batteries simple manufacturing systems, nothing to go wrong, uh, a nice alternative. Another nice little uh, alternative to the sort of electric razors, throw away um, sort of single use razors etc, these little things, and these have been invented for a long time and been around. The brush is wood, it's got um, animal hair bristles but you can have different um, different types. All you need with this setup is a steady hand and some soap. Um, again, nothing, uh, no plastics and all recyclable. You also end up with a much better shave. If you're interested in solar power but don't want to spend thousands of pounds on a, a permanent big setup there's things like this available and this is designed for a shed it's got its own solar panel and a nice little light they're not the brightest light in the world and the best advice I can give with these is to put some decent quality rechargeable batteries in them then they'll they'll last a lot longer and get a lot better brighter light from them but a cheap alternative for a little shed outhouse or a corner of somewhere and again doesn't require any mains. To, uh, to finish this up there's a couple more things that people can do right now and they're fairly cheap to do. So here we have LED light bulbs. Uh, these are for mains houses. They fit in just straight into your original light fittings and they use 80% less electricity. Now, if we all just put one of these in our houses, then we would save thousands and thousands of, of kilowatts every day of electricity, and that would produce that would save an awful lot of CO2, etc., going into the atmosphere. If we put one in every room in our houses, it would make an enormous difference. 60 million of these in the country would would actually make an impact so I'm going to start putting these into different places as I go now the very last thing that we can do which will make a difference 
I think everybody should consider is these. Now we have a plastic throwaway pen or a wooden pencil. Now when this is finished with, there's nothing left. It's all gone, it's used up. This one, when it's finished with, we've got the majority of it still there. All the plastic still exists. I don't know how many millions of these are thrown away every day in the UK, but it's got to be millions. If we'd started using a pencil instead of a pen, it would make a big difference. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little insight into some of the things that I do and use. Um, some of the things I will go into more in depth with and have videos on how to's, etc. Things like the, the flour mints, you know, the flour grinder, etc. Um, but in conclusion, basically, if we all just changed one light bulb or swapped one pen for a pencil for half of our work, it would make an enormous difference and it's tiny little changes but combined between us we can make a difference thanks for watching um, and if you haven't already click please subscribe and um, share with all your friends thank you very much